Hi, in this video we are talking about improv and how it can benefit you in your live streaming and if you're not live streaming it can benefit you in I'm sure a whole lot of other situations and I have a guest here who is an expert at it. Welcome Mr. Paul Burke. <laughs> Marcus, what's going on? I'm uh, still sweating <laughs> from the dancing. From all the dancing, yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for um, coming. And before we yeah. go really deep into improv, tell us uh, a bit about yourself. Sure. So um, I'm from California. I started doing improv about 15 years ago. Like I've always enjoyed making people laugh. Like for Like for me, that's the biggest rush there is is making somebody laugh and because when you laugh, you kind of forget your problems. But anyways, um, yeah. So I, I like doing that. I found improv, fell in love with it because you get to spend time with people on stage creating something, which I think really carries over perfectly for like live streamers. So yeah. So I've been just doing improv for 15 years, ran a theater, have four cats that like to jump up on <laughs> like to jump up on the counter <laughs> okay. and uh, almost knocked over everything right there. Oh, that would be, <laughs> okay. That, so, then we, so should, we could start improvisation if, if the cat knocks over everything. Else. Here's here's the problem, Marcus. Mm -hmm. I blame myself. I keep feeding them a little too much, <laughs> okay. I think. I don't want to fat energy. shame my cats, <laughs> but they're a little too heavy. The jumps are a little less high. They're... They're not hitting those high jumps anymore and uh, really struggled to get on the top of this. So anyways, it's my fault for feeding them too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and YouTube, uh, the days where YouTube was mainly cat videos is, is long gone. Also, I, uh, I saw a short of you that has really uh, much views with, with your cats. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With four cats, you got to find out how to like entertain them all at once. <laughs> okay. So... Yeah, so I figured I could like shine a bright, shiny object on a wall while playing with another one over here. So you got to multitask. Okay. And and can you make a living with, with improv? Uh, not really. I mean, okay. a very, very small percentage can. If, if, if you have a good paying job right now, I wouldn't recommend retiring and being like, well, it's improv here <laughs> on out and nothing but riches. Okay. I wouldn't do that. But yeah, I mean, you can make, you can make a modest, you can make a modest income and it's a lot of fun and you meet a ton of people and it's great that way. Okay. So uh, let's start with the basics. What, what is improv anyway? <laughs> Got it. So the basics, that's a great place to start. Um, improv is all about, well, first I'll say what it isn't because I think I think what people think improv is scares them away a lot of times. A lot of people think improv is about being constantly funny on stage, about creating amazing scenes. And uh, one second, let me close this door. <laughs> Who let the cats in? <laughs> yeah, I got to <laughs> So I think a lot of people think improv is all about being funny. And it's, it's not. Like, you can have very dramatic improv. You can have funny improv. And... Improv isn't about telling punchlines. It's not about a setup and punchline. It's about creating a story together with people, which we're all really good at. We're all very good natural storytellers if you just let go of the fear and, and not worry about being a good storyteller and just telling the story. Usually, you're great. Um, but it's about telling a story with other people on stage with you. And in telling that story, and there is no script, usually it's full of surprises, and usually the surprises can be very funny, especially when they're accepted by you and the group of individuals. So when, when the surprises aren't um, criticized or ignored or pushed away and rather embraced and explored, that can be super funny and very interesting. And the, the improv scene you're performing will go to places you never knew were possible because it's a group activity, not a solo activity. So 
I hope so, that answers it. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really helpful then, I guess, in, in team building as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I do a lot of team building exercises in, with, with groups as well. Um, yeah. So it's, it's about getting on stage, creating together, telling a story and seeing where it goes and also embracing the audience suggestions, which is really big. A lot of people love coming to the theater, throwing out a suggestion and seeing that woven into the narrative. They think it's magic and you know, in, in a way it is and it's fun. So yeah. <laughs> okay. That's and, it. <laughs> okay. That's I'm still good. sweating. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh boy. Work, that dance was good. It was a good hard, dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Lala was uh, in an online class of you. She said she was really scared. But um, she was. Yeah. She was great. She was fantastic. I, I love teaching first time improvisers because they usually do walk in pretty, pretty fearful. But then I'm like, Trust me, you have every one of the skills necessary. My job is just to help you be confident and all of those skills you can improve upon, um, but you have them all. So, Perfect. Yeah. And then Mark is also asking his improv about being comfortable, disclosing and dropping the barriers we put around ourselves. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's a beautiful way of putting it so it is because I, I i do think a lot of times you step on stage and you think this is what i'm capable of and then when your scene partner needs you to do something else that's maybe out of the realm of what you usually do let's say for instance like singing on stage i am not a strong singer I, singing improv not my strength but if needed in an improv scene and i'm there and i have to help my scene partner it's really amazing what you're capable of. Yeah, it's like yeah. the parent. You know what it is? It's like the parent. It's like the mom who can pick up a car off their daughter after okay. <laughs> after an accident. You're like, I don't know how that mom became the Hulk all of a sudden, but when needed, you have the power. Okay. You just have yeah. to find your own motivation. I guess the mother has the natural in, uh, motivation in that situation but it's it's just i guess you have to pass your fear and and lean into it yeah and, and so what i like about improv too I, i'm somebody who's like i don't know about you marcus but i'm somebody who has like a lot of fear like naturally like a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety so for me improv is great because the only thing i need to do is focus on what you're saying on stage and if i listen to what you're saying and i and i respond to that and i get out of my own way then the scene will have, then it'll be a lot of fun. And not only is the scene fun and creative, but I get to let go of all my fear and anxiety for like this short period of time. So I tell everybody like improv is like really great life hack where you get to let go of fear and anxiety because I'm too busy focused on you if I'm doing improv well and, and building off of what you're saying and what the scene needs. So Yes, and, and there is already a first bridge into live streaming because uh, of course there... I started five, six, five weeks ago, and there is also a lot of fear, but then you just have to do it. And, and the nice thing, it, it's maybe similar to the stage experience. Once you, you go live, you are live, and then you just have to roll with it. Yeah, you roll with it, and you just you trust yourself. That's a big one, too. Sorry, I know I'm all over the place, Marcus, because you asked to explain improv, and I'm <laughs> it's all over the place here. Okay, great, good, perfect, good. You and I, you and I, Marcus, we love getting derailed, so this is great. <laughs> um, improv is all about trusting that you're good enough to succeed, and and that's another huge thing too. That you have all the skills, you're good enough to succeed, and just go do it now. And that's scary, like hitting the go, you know, go live. That can be scary because you're like, well. Maybe I should get one more piece of tech. Maybe I should just practice, you know, 10 more minutes. And, oh, maybe I should drink one more glass of water so my voice is better. And it's like, no, you're good enough. People just want to be with you and spend time with you. Go for it. Yes, so. and you will never uh, get better if you're not doing it. That's, of course. So speaking of derailing, we can address some questions here. <laughs> so Love it. JV, what is your favorite? What is that word even? 
Oh, How do my you favorite Whose Line game. Oh, Whose Line, okay. Or any so the TV game show. in general. So Whose Line, I love Blind Line. That's, that's like my go-to super fun one where the audience provides all the lines of dialogue and you write them on pieces of paper, you put them on the floor, and every so often you pick up a piece of paper, you read it, but you don't know what it says, and you have to justify why you just said, we need a bigger boat from Jaws in the middle of a desert. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's, for me, I love that game. That's a fun game. Okay, so it it's, uh, replaces the suggestions from the audience uh, a bit then. Yeah, okay. and the audience loves that game. Okay. And I guess, and for me, that's why I think improv ties into, ties into live streaming so well, because the audience loves to be a part of the show. And you can, and I feel in many ways, the audience in a live stream is a huge part of the show. If you, if you invite them in to be part of the show, um, I think there's a lot of live streamers out there who are like, nope, I'm good. I'm enough. I don't, I don't need that. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I the, do think. But then why why do it live if if you don't, don't care about the audience? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm with you. I like interacting with the audience. Like it's fun. I love their ideas. I love kind of playing off of their ideas. No bad mm. ideas is a big idea in improv. That you can say yes to anything and explore it. You don't have to love it, but you can explore <laughs> it. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and I mean with, so. with live streaming, um, you should not be constantly. Um, derailed by the audience maybe you should uh, or you can do that as a concept but, but if you want to uh, it, uh, if you have a goal to to deliver something then you have to put it in blocks maybe yeah I know I think what you're saying is right and I was thinking about that today I think in a lot of ways improv is you're not always turning to the audience for ideas it's not like you're up there doing a show and every line of dialogue, you're turning to the audience and saying, okay, what should I say now? Okay, how about now? What about this moment, guys? Like, you're capable of doing so much, but the ability to invite them into the show is, I think, a real gift that you, you can take advantage of, and it, I think it's very fun to do that, but not always. I agree. I agree. And, and Marcus, I did that. Like, when I started live streaming, I was like, great. I'm just going to, like, interact with the audience the whole time. And that'll be fun. And it's it's not as fun for the audience because they, they do want to see something created. But if you're mm -hmm. always turning to them, it, it can kind of derail. So Yeah. I, I had another trick to to always know what to say. I just have a guest always here. And so... <laughs> <laughs> One day I will have to try one alone and then see to, to conquer the next fear. <laughs> that's improv. See, that's that's like yeah. me. I love stepping on stage with somebody else. Like yeah. you and I, like we're in a scene, but we also have, I think, the audience is like another scene partner as well. So we get to kind yeah. of use what they say. So, yeah, I love this the most. Like interacting with somebody and hanging out, like yeah. it's the best. Then we have another question from Lisa. I'm all about making making others shine. What is the place for the straight man in improv? Soft humor too small. Uh, so Lisa, let me know if I'm answering your question because I think. Well, I don't know. What do you What do you think, Marcus? <laughs> I'm. I don't know. I I give that one to you. <laughs> oh, that's me. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't want to. <laughs> That was that was me not wanting to like storm in with a with a thought. I just wanted to kind of. Um, so Lisa, I think I think the straight man is like the most valuable person on the stage. Well, I think everybody's really valuable. I think the straight man has a lot of work to do because not only does a straight person have to understand what a normal world looks like, but they have to feed the other improviser kind of like ideas that the the the. The, I'll say the unusual. So there's a straight man and the unusual character. The straight man has to, how do I say this? The straight man's like the conduit. This might sound a little crazy. Marcus, pull me back from the ledge if I sound too insane here. Um, the straight man is the connection for the audience and the scene because the straight man 
is the audience on stage. When the audience is watching the scene, the straight man is who they would be thinking what's happening is a little unusual. This is very strange. But because the straight man keeps living in that world, the audience too will keep living in that scene because they're like, cool, I'm part of this world through the straight man. So I think the straight man's super important. And like, like I'll do this sometimes in interviews or shows. Like I will, I will set up something that I know the other person can kind of like hit a home run off of. Like I'm like, oh, you you do this thing really well. I'll say something that kind of allows that person to do what they do really well. I don't know. Does that make sense, Marcus? Am I crazy? <laughs> I don't think you're. Crazy. I mean, those <laughs> those aren't mutually exclusive. Those could be the same. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. Uh, no, that makes sense for me. Um, are you are you often second guessing yourself? Or? Do I second guess myself? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, honestly, I do. I'll second guess myself and I've done it for a long time. Okay. So I, yeah, if you second guess yourself on stage, don't, um, don't, don't criticize yourself. Just, just <laughs> okay. realize you're second guessing yourself. And the other thing too, if you're second guessing yourself on stage or in a live stream, what you're doing is pulling yourself out of that new moment that you could just relax into and explore. So just just notice, it's a lot like meditation. I think improv is honestly just like active meditation. It's just meditation with more <laughs> movement. Okay. Um, that, yeah, if you're doubting yourself, you're in your head. And if you're in your head, you're not in the scene or you're not in the live stream, you're separated from it. So just recognize it, just take a breath and get back into that scene. Okay. Yeah. That helps. Yeah, it helps a lot. I, I, I see that there is, is a lot of, of things, as I suspected and said in the, beginning that in the beginning, that you can take from improv and, and use in your everyday life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mark... Yeah, a lot of it's applicable. Mark uh, reacted to the... Uh, he says, I love the way you say you're not a strong singer rather than I can't sing. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, a good Mark. point. <laughs> Yeah, and and yeah, it, it was the same as uh, I was asking you, uh, are you a dancer for the countdown? And you said something like, I'll be whatever <laughs> you need. <laughs> and yeah, and you, you leaned dance, really into, into that. <laughs> I feel the most comfortable dancing in the shower and in the car. But if you need me to dance on, on, on screen, I'll do, I'll do it. I'll okay. go for it. But um, yeah, Mark, I think, well, I'm glad... I'm glad you like that because I realized if I say I'm not a singer, that's very definitive. That's very like, that's, that, that feels like it's for always and ever. I'm not a singer. But if I say I'm not a strong singer, well, then I'm, I still have a capability and I feel like it's still open that I can get better. But if I'm saying I'm not a singer, then it feels very definitive. It feels like throwing up a wall. Yes, and, and usually others like ourselves more than we do uh, ourselves. So I, I was streaming in this closed group from a from, uh, private group from Live Streaming Pros, and, and there I was singing, and <laughs> I'm definitely not the strong singer, but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Uh, people just like it, and, and the people who don't like it, they just don't listen to it. That's, that's the beauty. In theater, it's a go. bit... Uh, more difficult because yeah the people are kind of trapped there but in a live stream if you don't like it you just leave <laughs> here's one thing about like performing a lot is you realize that you don't know anything <laughs> that i have so often walked off the stage and thought well that was a terrible show i should probably just pack up all my stuff and move out of this city because I don't want to see anybody here ever again. That was embarrassing. It is, it is shocking the number of times you think you have a bad show. That is the moment somebody walks up to you and says, I love that. That was a really fun choice. I really liked that character you did. And I'm like, huh, I guess what I think is truth is not definitive because people can be getting stuff out of this 
of your work. And even if you don't think something of it, somebody could be getting something from it. So that I, I think of that sometimes when I, when I hesitate to create and put out videos, which I do that a lot. I mean, I don't think we're all immune to that. We all have that fear that I realize those shows that I've done in the past where I thought it was bad, but somebody got something out of it. And I'm like, okay, well, I should probably push out my content then because somebody somewhere might be getting something out of it. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, it's just a, the trick is to match it, match what you're producing to the per people who need uh, who needs to hear it. And, and that's what I experienced a lot is um, whatever we have to, to put out there, someone is looking for exactly that. That's, uh, yeah. Have you have you finished one of these live streams before and thought, ooh, that wasn't great? <sighs> Not even necessarily like the ones on this channel, but just kind of like in 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 the life of Marcus. Have you done live streams? <laughs> yeah, of course. Where, yeah, where uh, like, <clears throat> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, the practice ones. I um, at first they're really hard because. Um, I try to watch them back. The, the ones I do here, I watch at least two times um, to improve on. And at, at first, it's really uh, cringy. <laughs> what have I done yeah. there? But um, uh, with keep do keeping doing it, um, it just gets easier and it makes more sense. And yeah, I had I had some where I thought, no, that is not good. And if you if you really watch it back, then yeah, there's always something good in it. So. Yeah, there is yeah. for sure. Cool. Okay, we pick another question from Anna. What do you do if the audience participation goes wrong? Like someone gets offended. What do you do to bring it back to funny? That's a great question. Um, well, so I I have rarely that's a great question. So I don't get a lot of people offended in this show. The shows that I've done that I'm trying to re remember it usually That's a really hard boy. I'm, I'm okay. I'm I, I have I have an example for that. <laughs> um, yeah, it's many years ago, and and I was in a. It was not improv. It was a theater, but it was two clowns, and they played the. They they basically played the Bible. They played <laughs> the the history of Easter, and. Um, it was it was pretty funny, but they went so far to actually do the oh now my English comes the when you uh, on the cross mm. and then uh, there were some people leaving because that was then simply too much for them. But yeah, uh, yeah, and, uh, I think if if it's really gone too far, then it can be hard. But but um, I don't know if you if you even would would feel it in the moment from the from the audience that it went too far. You can I mean you can sometimes feel it in the audience that it's 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 gone sideways. Um you usually just wipe the scene and then start with something okay. else. So here's the thing and I think I don't know this is this is the answer my brain's spitting out and I hope it <laughs> okay. I hope it helps. That the audience is if somebody gets offended, that's that's fine. For me, I'm fine. I'm fine with that because my goal is never to offend somebody or hurt their feelings. And um and I and I did run the theater back in the we eventually had to close, but when I when I was running the theater, we would get some people sometimes who would say, "Hey, you know, that I didn't like that. That was offensive. You know, maybe it was like some religious stuff or not necessarily. It could have just been anything. But um, I would always let them know like, hey, that's not our goal. Our goal isn't to offend you. Our goal is just to explore 
this scene. And sometimes, sometimes swear words happen. Sometimes the, you know, there might be some, um, you know, different sort of like references or context. And, and sometimes, and I, and I was performing in a pretty conservative space, conservative area. And sometimes people would get offended and you just kind of like, you respect that. You're like, well, they're offended. That's, that's them. And that's okay. Like they're taking care of themselves and that's totally fine. They got to do what's best for them. And that's fine. Um, and what, what would happen in, in what you find out a lot in doing shows and everything is that if the audience, the audience in many ways, they're just there to have a good time and they're there to enjoy themselves. And if you act like something's wrong, then they will embrace that idea that something is wrong and something is bad. But if you act like this is great, things are going well, we're all going to make this work, it's going to get back to good, the audience will typically kind of embrace that and be like, yeah, it's going to get back to good. Let's just kind of like explore this. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that helps at all. But. Yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> okay. Yes. So. Yeah, and, and the thing is, um, again, that, that, that's probably mo uh, much easier with live streaming because eventually you will find the people um, who like your style and the others will leave. So, and to bring that in a bit, uh, have you some practical tips for live streamers, how they could improve with, with techniques from improv? Yes. I wrote this down. Marcus? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I planned. I planned, Marcus, because I was like, I want to make sure I get to some key points. Um, a big one is, like for me, is be curious. Like, if you are talking about a subject, explore it fully. Like, in an improv scene, if you are in the kitchen, explore that kitchen. Why are you in this kitchen? Why does it matter? Why are you standing with this person in the kitchen? Why are you five feet away versus one feet away? Oh, are you one foot away from the other character? Are you guys lovers and cooking dinner together? Um, why, is that a dishwasher that's going? Why is a dishwasher going? What did you guys have for dinner last night? Was it a romantic meal last night? So like fully explore the space and ex and fully explore the topics and be curious about it. Just ask questions. I think a lot of people, I, I mean, I don't know a lot of people, but I do know an improv that sometimes they're like, okay, I got to get from here to there. I got to go from this moment. And I, I want to, at the end of this scene, I think it'd be really funny if, if X happens. So they try to very quickly get to that place rather than just kind of like being curious and kind of exploring the space and seeing how they feel about it and seeing how they feel about the other person about it. So I guess, if, for instance, if you're like talking about a topic, um, ask questions. Don't be afraid of asking questions to the audience because the audience wants to interact with you. So like ask them questions. What do you think about this? What do you think about that? Um, not being an expert is a great is a great skill. Saying I don't know is a real gift, especially in improv. Because when you say I don't know, you can follow that up with like, let's let's find out together. And some of the f the f the most fun moments I've had live streaming is discovering stuff together with the audience. So, um, so long story short, be curious. And um, the second thing I'd say is say yes and, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard the idea of improv, that you want to say yes and to ideas. Um, and what that simply means, really, really, really um, quickly, is that when somebody says something, don't shut it down. Be curious about the thing and explore it. So this ties into the curiosity thing. If somebody says, you know, the audience... Um, you know, do you like, let's say, are you excited about Halo Infinite? They're asking me if I'm excited about Halo Infinite. I could say yes or no. I mean, I could, but what I encourage you to do is say, say yes to the question in the way that you want to explore it. So if you say no, I'm not really excited about Halo Infinite. 
why? Like, why are you concerned about it? Why are you not interested in it? So what you're saying yes to is you're embracing the question, even though you're saying no, even though if I'm on stage with somebody and somebody says, hey, you want to go to the beach? I don't have to say yes. I could say no, but I need to follow it up with information. Like, no, I'm pretty scared of sharks. Like, I'm so terrified of sharks because then that reveals a little bit about myself and the audience on stage, the audience when you're doing a live show or like when you're doing live streaming, they want to know about you. They want to learn about you. And the more you're curious and willing to open up and saying yes, they, they, they appreciate the openness. So those are, those are the really two big ones I would say. Okay. That are very good tips. And of course, that uh, one you could prepare because you knew we will we'll talk about that. But now we, we try to be a bit uh, spontaneous. Um, <laughs> <laughs> could, could we do so? Could we try some improv? Could you? You want to do some improv together? Yes. Uh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, so lines from the audience might be kind of hard in this situation, but a game that I think works really well is questions only and questions only is marcus you and i are going to be in a location and we will get that location from the audience in a second but we can only speak in questions we cannot make statements so for instance hey it's great to see you i cannot say that but like hey are you doing okay after that surgery <laughs> that is totally fine okay the other you want to give that a shot you want to play Hey, of course. <laughs> I just thought, I love what, it. What, what did I get myself into? <laughs> you're going to do great. Paul, you're, a also, little, you're, you're getting a little blurry for me. I don't <laughs> oh, am I getting a little blurry for you? Okay. Yeah, but I, I can hear you fine, off. so. <laughs> I'm going to turn things off. Maybe that's uh, an effect. <laughs> blurry Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not an effect I want. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a good effect. I, I once saw this movie... And there was a, a guy in it, uh, he, he was always blurry. <laughs> it was a fun idea. <laughs> <laughs> See? Okay, that's a great example. Like, the blurriness, you didn't freak out. You're like, oh, that reminds me of a movie where a guy was blurry. And then you're like, oh, maybe that'd be a cool effect to add an overlay <laughs> yeah. where the person gets blurry all the time. I, I just gonna... have to make myself blurry, too. And <laughs> <laughs> let, me go, let me go correct one quick thing. I think I know okay. the issue. So in the meantime, Paul said we need a location. Maybe someone can provide that. <laughs> Paul is in witness project protection. <laughs> exactly. All right, okay. how's that? Oh, I already asked trash. for the location. And, uh, okay. It's the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this so bad? Okay, but the audio is coming through okay? Yes, yes. Well, that's good. Okay. Or, cool. or we can take Pluto or Australia. Uh, let's go with the first one. I love it. The DMV. Yes, that's that's the the car registration thing in, in the US. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So I'll start. Is that your motorcycle up front? Why do you want to know? Have you ever gone 120 miles per hour? Why would I not go so? <laughs> Do you think that's too fast? Would you believe I once did it and went back in time? What did you do back in time? <laughs> Have you ever met your dad <laughs> as a younger man? What? <laughs> What would I do when I met my dad? <laughs> what does he like to do? <laughs> <laughs> why, why is this so hard? <laughs> it is. Marcus, you're killing it. Like you're doing a great, a great, okay. great job. <laughs> yeah, you're doing fantastic. So that's what... Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry the internet's really bad right now, guys. Um, yeah, as, as long as the sound is good, who cares? 
Okay, that's good. As long as the sound is good. Um, hold on, I'm trying to <laughs> fix on the fly, of course. Yeah, it's that, fixed on the that fly. That will not exactly. make us nervous. Real life, that's part of the. <laughs> so, questions only is a great game. One, because it really makes you rethink how to say information because you have to phrase it as a question. Also, it's a it's a great it's a great skill to learn how to add information into any statement or or any question. So the the beautiful thing about improv is that um, I get to just kind of like listen to what you're saying and then build, add a little bit to it. So my goal and, and my mission is to add a little bit of something that you can play off of. So have you ever met your dad as a younger man gives you something to play off of? Like, what would we do if we mm -hmm. hung out together? Um, so it's a really, it's a really fun skill. And that's something you can practice just with somebody else. Uh, you want to do another, yes. another game? Yes. That would be cool. fun. So another one of my favorites is, um, it's just, it's called ABCs. So we're going to do a two person improv game where, Every line of dialogue is going to be the next letter in the alphabet. So, for instance, uh, my first sentence would begin with A, and then your, your response would begin with B, and then C, and then D, and so on. And, uh, like, you could do this. You could, you could keep doing this. It doesn't have to end necessarily. So this is a great way to practice. Um, and the other nice thing, too, is it pulls you out of your brain. Because you're focusing so hard on the alphabet, you're less likely to judge yourself on your statements because you're just trying to get the game right. The nice thing about improv games is that the construction of the rules gives your brain something to chew on, so you're less likely to, to criticize and judge yourself because you're like, I got to make sure I'm, I'm focused on that. So, mm -hmm. cool. So, yeah. Oh, tech is getting a little—it's getting a little better. Yeah, you're. I almost can see the sweat again. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus throwing shade. Okay, I like it. <laughs> okay, so you want me to start? Yes, please. Another day at the office, Chuck. But it's only 11. <laughs> Could we just sneak out and go catch a movie together? Do you think we could get away with that? What will the boss say? Every time I've done it, I've gotten away with it. <laughs> Every, let's do it. <laughs> Get your jacket, my man, because we're about to go see the new James Bond movie. Yeah, I wanted to see that for a <laughs> long time. <laughs> I think maybe we could uh, stop off at the bar and get a couple drinks, too. Just a few. I don't uh, want to get drunk too early. Keep... It classy. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm up for it. <laughs> nice. Perfect. That's exactly how you do it. And you can just, um, I love it. I, that's yeah, a very fun go. game. You want to try another, we'll try another scene? I guess. Um, yes, of can course. Can we get a audience? Beautiful, amazing, wonderful audience. Could, could we get a location for uh, a location that is like, there's a lot of, a lot of pressure. It's a, it's a high stress job we're, we're two 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 gentlemen are trying to figure it out thanks ash that's very reassuring that that not uh, only we two have fun <laughs> oh look you can see my sweat again that's good <laughs> yes perfect fantastic okay we have nail bar we have air traffic Ooh. controller operating room surgeons <laughs> nuclear bunker <laughs> these are good i love that mark said nail bar he's like nail bar high pressure those nails aren't gonna aren't gonna paint themselves <laughs> the it help <laughs> <laughs> <A circumcision. laughs> that's 
Okay. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So. Where do you want to go? Well, uh, your choice. Your choice, sir. Okay. What, what would be... Yeah. Do we go in the nuclear bunk or is, uh, is that fun enough? I don't know. <laughs> So here's um, so mm-hmm. here's something else that in improv it happens all the time. Like you'll get a lot of people throwing out suggestions, and I like to just be really honest with people and say like I love them all. They're all great. This is the one that that jumped out to me. Um, you know, just so you, just so people know. Like I I don't think anybody's going to be offended here, but just in you know in the future and stuff. Like sometimes people, you know, here here's the the big thing too that I that I always try to tell people is that the audience throwing out a, a suggestion or writing something in the chat is super vulnerable. Like people, a lot of people just watch, but there's, there are people who are like brave enough to like put themselves out there in the chat and they That's write down ideas and they write down suggestions and, and you got to love, you got to love them for that. And you got to appreciate that because they literally want to be there and help your show. So you always got to have, be very grateful that people want to open up and share with you. So I think it's very important to, um, as like a host or of a, of a live show or like a live stream or something to like really be grateful for the people opening up and sharing ideas. So I always say like, I love them all. These are all fantastic ideas, truthfully. And then just go with the one that you're like, this is the one that jumped out at me. So anyways, side Yeah, but that's a a very good tip. I didn't think about that. It's a, it's not only we who are vulnerable, it's also people who write something, of course. Yeah, because, I mean, I don't know if you've ever done this. I know I've done this. I've written comments before, and sometimes you're watching, like, does anybody like it? Is anybody going to respond course. to it? Do I get any <laughs> smiley faces? Do I get any hearts? Oh, God, I hope I get a thumbs up at least, you know, over on Facebook during, like, yeah, either or something. Especially if, if, if you're making a joke and you're not sure is it perceived mm-hmm. funny or not, and then... Yes, then I was waiting desperately, say something, say something. And if yep. not, then sometimes I deleted it afterwards. Uh, that's a very good point. A hundred, a hundred percent. Okay, yep. so, but where do we go? <laughs> Ash, I love it. She's like, we're waiting for more fun. Yeah. Stop talking about all this crap and get to the fun. I like, don't I think that <laughs> was the intention. <laughs> She's like, just pick one. God, I want entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's funny. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Yes. Can can we do something with the nuclear bunker? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh, and also, uh, audience, can you let us know what letter are we going to start with? We're not going to start with A this time. You get to pick any letter, and once we get to uh, Z, it'll just circle back to A. So we'll just kind of okay, keep going, we're going to see around <laughs> in a nuclear. Bunker. I love it. That's a great idea. Okay, we have an M. John was fastest. <laughs> Do you want to start? Okay. My God, are we safe in here? No. <laughs> we will die. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so afraid. Please, just make your peace with God and any apologies you want to throw my way is okay as well. Quasimodo, we have to (laughs) (laughs) to make peace, I see. (laughs) Right now, it sounded like you just called me Quasimodo. (laughs) Suspicious, isn't it? (laughs) Tell me you're not calling your coworker in this bunker <laughs> Quasimodo. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> that was the nerves because I'm so afraid. Very revealing that you would make sounds rather than address me. What do you want from me? We're in danger. Xylophones. I want those xylophones you promised me. Yeah, let's play. That maybe will help. (laughs) 
Zounds is what I would write right now if I were making a comic book. The sound effect Zounds. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Basically, when we turn these keys, the whole world is going to change. Change can be a good thing, but I'm not sure if we really should do it. Damn it, man. I'm saying that you and I control the entire world right now. Even if it's a really high risk, we should, you, you say we should do it. Frankly, I think it might be a good choice. Good, let's try. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that's, I love it. It gets you out of your head. I think it's so much fun. You killed it. Like, you, nice work. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, sec feel? the second one was, was much easier than the first one. So it's, it's really about practicing just to, once again, how can it help you with live streaming or, or in everyday life? Um, yes, do it multiple times, practice it. And, and I would say lean into it because you, you really have to say, okay, maybe I will say something stupid, but um, I'll just, just go or else we have nothing. And... The, the things that you think are stupid, too, can sometimes, like, just be the most fun thing to explore. The, like, like, the fact you called me Quasimodo, <laughs> like, that, or you, that you said Quasimodo, and then I got to interpret that as, like, you yes. calling me that personally. That was a very fun, interesting dynamic between our relationship. So, um, the other thing, too, is I would say don't be afraid of emotion. Like, add emotion into what you're saying. Like, mm -hmm. um, so many scenes will work so much better uh, on stage or I think in live streams too, like when you are really, when you're emotional, and I don't mean like necessarily tears, but like even excitement, like even passion, like that passion will carry through the camera and people will just want to hang out with somebody passionate. Like there are people that I don't really have an interest in necessarily what they're teaching or talking about, but it's fun. Like the people that I have the most fun talking with are people who are passionate about something, even though if I don't understand it completely, it's just fun to be around passion and exciting, uh, excitement. It just, it's something fun to feed off of. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah, and yeah. A, another thing, um, we did, we, we both did this leader challenge and uh, you, you're always really popular because people think you're really fun and and if I talk with other people, say uh, I, I would like to be as fun as Paul. And I think uh, each one has to find the own um, his own fun, because not everybody just can can come up with all these funny things. So so find your own entertaining side. Yeah, I agree with you. I think. Sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm thinking through that as I'm answering yeah i think everybody is very so if what i'm hearing you say is like kind of like lean into your strength is that yes. right yes yeah and, and, i agree and, and, and find your your own your own fun <laughs> how can you be fun if you're not maybe the person just to go there and bang? <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah I think, um, I think why people, and, and let me, if you feel differently, I'd love for you to tell me, like, I think people liked hanging out in my live streams because, um, I, I accepted when everything fell apart. <laughs> um, at least on camera I did. <laughs> um, <Okay. laughs> um, yeah, I mean. If, if things go sideways, if things go wrong, the audience wants to know that it's it's all going to be fine and we just get to hang out and be have fun together. And I would respond a lot to people's comments too. Like on a, I think that's not the trick. I, I want I was going to say trick, but I don't think it's like a trick. 
but I think that's the secret. Um, I'm going to write a book called The Secret. I think it's going to be huge. <laughs> um, that if if you're caring about other people's comments when they write something and you're exploring their ideas, they feel very, they feel very honored. They feel very like appreciated. And I feel like this might seem really silly. I think everybody just wants to feel super appreciated. So if you take the time to appreciate what they took, took a few seconds to write to you and they were brave and put themselves out there and revealed themselves a little bit. And you're like, I love that. Thank you for revealing yourself. I love who you are. And not only do I love it, I'm going to build off of that. I'm going to say yes to it and build this idea. So if somebody's like, you know, oh, we should go to Las Vegas, I'd be like, that's a great idea. Like, I really want to go see Britney Spears. Like, just that, just that moment of like loving what they said mm -hmm. and revealing a little bit about who I am, I think really builds a lot of, builds a strong relationship, even relationship even though it's just online. Yeah, so. I, I think it comes down to, to loving people in general and and to, to care about what others think. Yeah. And and the other thing that, uh, well, what you already said and also is an improv is to, to explore the idea. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. yeah, I hear that message. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, one uh, another thing, um, if, if you perceived as, oh, here it's always fun, here we can always uh, have fun, um, it's, it's some, sometimes hard if you want to talk about something serious and people drag you back to the fun side. I was just, <laughs> I was just talking about this with my dad yesterday, that he said, do people, um, do, do people sometimes don't pay it. Do they not think what you're saying is serious because you make a lot of jokes all the time? And I'm like, oh yeah, all the time. Like I'll try to make a serious comment and people are like, oh, you probably mean that in some jokey way. And I'm like, no, I mean that in a serious <laughs> yeah. way. So it can be interesting sometimes where people, you know, they, they start to expect that that is who you are all the time. Um, which I think is a great rem reminder for all of us that, uh, you know, I, I know I probably put people in boxes too and i'm like oh that's the type of person you are and that is what you do okay and, which isn't necessarily true everybody's got a lot of layers mm. so okay so um i had uh, many comments here about people who went to your improv class and i i wanted to catch one the longest time too uh, you you're doing them physically but um mm -hmm. Most people will not be near, uh, but you only uh, you uh, do that them also online. Yeah, so um, so I have been doing them in person, and actually starting next week, I'm going to start doing them um, online again as well. Because I had a lot of people asking, like, "Oh, can I? You know, I want to jump. I want to do improv, but I feel more comfortable doing it over Zoom, or I, or mm -hmm. I live way far away and, and can't make the drive, like you were saying." So yeah, so starting next week, I'm going to start doing them on Thursdays. Um, it's at six o'clock Pacific time. So six o'clock Pacific, which so nine o'clock Eastern, and um, and if if there are people who that time doesn't work for them either, like I'm I'm open to like doing something earlier in the day as well because okay, it's yeah, fun. I, I, enjoy I just it a lot. figured I have to take the the day after. Um, of work <laughs> and then why not do improv at three o'clock in the night <laughs> oh my gosh why no, not we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll <laughs> no i'll move it we'll do we'll do like a special one earlier in the no, day I, um we, we'll find something but if if people are watching this uh right now uh i have uh, already the link to your youtube channel but if you're messaging me where where, where do you announce? Uh, the, do you have a website or is it in Facebook? or? Yeah, so you can just go to uh, improvwithpaul.com and it's it's I have like links there. And I'm also going to be starting a program within the month. 
I'm going to start a program where it's just for live streamers who, because one, one thing with improv is that you get people from like all walks of life, which is great, which is cool. Some people want to be performers, other people, they don't, they want to work on team building stuff, but I'm going to do a group that's just live streamers that meets once a week and we do a couple exercises, hopefully getting you more confident. Um, and yeah, so it'll just be kind of like a, a, a group that just meets up and you can take advantage of it every week. You don't have to, but it'll be specifically exercises tailored that I think will make you a more confident and more comfortable live streamer, um, whether it's just interacting with the camera or the audience or, or all of the above. So oh, that's perfect. So we... We just rehearsed a bit for that today. Then. Yeah, yeah. So that's oh, that's but, some of the stuff we'll be doing. But that is is really cool. So um, if you message me uh, those things, I can put them in the comments uh, in the comments in the Thanks. description afterward. And I'm really looking forward to to this. And I think many here would. Yes, Anna already says sign me up. And here we have the. Link to your website, perfect. <laughs> so I what, I do. <laughs> what I do. Dot com slash what I do. What does yes. he do? Go to what I do. Um, okay, and you said you, that that will be a weekly thing. That that will be fantastic. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so that'll be a weekly um, opportunity. And yeah, and I, and I have some other ideas for it, but mainly what it's going to be is a chance where you can just start to get more comfortable through doing uh, activities and exercises. Cause like you just, like you just found out, like just doing it a couple times, you start to realize, Oh, this isn't as hard and as terrifying as I thought it was. And, and, you know, like you said, the second one easier than the first. So. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it was I fun. Just, that was fun, man. That I, was get, really I fun got the, the exclusive game. pilot to that and I can highly recommend it. And, um, yes. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so very much for taking the time to be here. And um, I would say for the for the finish line, just a little bit more of dancing, and then we're good to go. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> dancing with cats. <laughs>